So this research paper caught my eye for a plethora of different reasons. It's called Curious Causality Seeking Agents Learn Meta-Causal World, and it's put out by the Institute of Automation in China, uh, Peking University, University of College of London, King Abdullah University, the Swiss AI Labs, and University of Bristol. So you basically you have like representation from around the world, essentially, within this research paper. Uh, and then so essentially what they go over and, and their big framework within this is very simple, that they introduce the metacausal graph as world models, a minimal unified representation that efficiently encodes the transformation rules governing how causal structures shift across different latent world states. So in very like simple short terms and to give you a very broad idea of like what this does overall. So um, it utilizes it as a kind of a base knowledge graphs, right? But um, it utilizes the underlying structure of the data set, which I'll dive into heavily. So, uh, but then uh, also to the other thing is, is that it, it has and it, it has a place within the knowledge graphs for causal structures. And that's kind of what the whole point and premise of it is. And then what is a causal structure, right? So let's say uh, in this instance, and I'll show you examples where they utilize an example of like a door, right? And then so a door can have two states. It can be either open or closed, but then the door can also have a causal state and it can be either locked or unlocked. And then so if the door is locked and you push on it, nothing happens. If the door is unlocked and you push on it, the door opens. And then so uh, the model has to learn that causal state and that relationship in order to like fully understand how to fully manipulate and open the door, right? <clears throat> so that's kind of just the overlying gist and base of this. And then it's uh, 33 pages of that, really. Like, I mean, very, like, it dives into like the theories behind it and a lot of the math. And then so let's, let me, I'll just show you. And there's a few things I want to point out within this very specifically. The very first thing I want to point out is their first point in this uh, preliminaries here, right? Uh, make sure. Ooh. Actually, let me go down. This one, okay. Uh, 3.2 here. Identifiability of metastates. So in this subsection, we'll uh, discuss the identifiability of the metastates from this environment. We'll first, and we first introduce the concept of swap label equivalence between two mappings. And then they give all of the math and then the theories behind swap label equivalence here. <laughs> so what exactly is swap label equivalence? Very simplistically, it's what I've been telling you for a few years now directly on this channel. Right, which is that uh, the models learn from an underlying latent space of the data, like an underlying structure, like a, a projection of your data, right? So the data set in and of itself is never the most important component because in this instance, you can swap out and like pieces, large pieces of the data set, and then still get that same thing. And that's, that's what they're, they, they have to uh, prove this out in order to get to their larger theorem. But I just want to highlight that uh, very simplistically, right? And then they get into like the con kind of how the causal subgraph works. And then it's, they dive into this a lot that, so it's not just simple knowledge graphs and, and, and that structure that it's essentially like it, it, the, the graphs operate on like two different planes, right? You have two, two graphs because that's the, 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 uh, like the normal normal knowledge graph that you would have that connects concepts like, I don't know, king, queen, man, etc. But then you also have that, uh, those causal relationships, right? So that, that like, what happens if, um, the king is uh, it, it dependent on the economy, for example, would be a causal relationship within that, right? Uh, and then like that, like the, and the, the, uh, like a uh, reaction towards the king is dependent on the economy. Like, and so, uh, then you have, Uh, it, a lot of this, and then it just gets very heavy into like the math overall within this, and then they have their benchmark testing showing that their their method's good, um, and then it's all like it's just related works, and then the rest is like all theorems, right? Like this is all their their proof of concepts uh, from here, like all of the like deep mathematics behind this, how exactly they're um, structuring it out and getting to it overall. So overall, really cool, interesting research paper to me overall. Uh, I get the other thing I want to highlight on this research paper too as well before we dive into the code is is that like 
this very specifically is dealing with models learning meta causal world, uh, meta causal connections within a world environment, within an environment, right? which is <laughs> important on two levels. One, it's demonstrating and just showcasing within this that these models are actually learning something within this. And then two, the second most important part, uh, and I should dive into this overall, is that like it's important to understand that at this point, these frameworks and how this is working, so like the underlying structure within this is uh We'll call it like ripping and replacing the uh, like token prediction mechanisms that you would normally have within an LLM model, right? Like the the uh, normal like uh, the criticism that most people have uh, with models overall is that they're built off of next token predictors, right? This model is very specifically a world model, uh, and then so I'll show you in the code, but it's not like there's no token prediction within these models. It's not how they're working overall. Like the the guide mechanism for this model is very specifically a curiosity mechanism and then so the model is given the world and then this is how it operates within the world and then given a curiosity mechanism to make sure that it explores all of the different variables that can come into play like taking different actions when the door is locked taking different than when it's open etc and then playing out those different scenarios so then it has a good enough baseline to then start training itself and that's what we'll showcase within this right and then so the bottom line within that is is that one it's not like there's no token prediction next token prediction at all within this that whole entire structure is stripped out of this and then yes you can absolutely plug and play this same type of structure into an, a transformer model and that would absolutely work overall right like so just annihilates any sort of criticism that most people <laughs> bring up within those things uh, and the second thing is is that this structure what is actually happening within here is 100 percent just pure environmental learning Learning, right like oh I'm giving the data set that it's learning from is this is the actions that can be taken when the door is open versus closed and this is what happens it's, it's a set of rules <laughs> and then the model is just uh, going through and then playing out different scenarios and trying to figure out how that works right so let's take a look at the code within this overall uh, and then so as I mentioned at the top right like um, this model and and what they're talking about within this research paper is a lot what I've talked about on this channel before and, uh, and uh, for a while and then so uh, it's very specifically like this architecture is uh, like I mean it's there's a reason why I built the Zyra architecture, right? I didn't just like go out of my behind and like, oh, let me pick out like something at random, right? I think I, like there's some people that think that, like, uh, but no, like I mean, like I mean, here it is, right? There's very specific. Like, I just look at it like from an engineer perspective, take it apart, put it back together again. Where's the missing parts? Where can I make it better? Where can I improve it? Here you go. Uh, and how is it actually working? Like when I put it back together and take it apart, right? Uh, and then all of those things combined, and it's like, okay, this is exactly what is going on within this. And then so uh, this particular uh, representation, I took their model. So it's the curious causality seeking agents model. Uh, and then I also enhanced it a bit with some Zyra architecture within this. And so that's essentially what we're looking at here. So it's not a pure. Uh, representation of their model, but it's uh, it's enhanced <laughs> with Zyra, right? But so what I want to showcase within this for you and, and highlight is essentially uh, if the model, like if I, the model were to have eyes, this is essentially what it would see. Like, um, and then this is like, and and so we're again feeding it this problem of this open door problem, right? And then so it's. Is the door locked or unlocked is the causality graph. So there's two graphs that it's two graph states that it has, right? Meta state zero and meta state one. Uh, and then it's essentially like trying to understand the relationships and, and how these two graphs correlate together and, and the correlation between that and then understand what actions it should take. And then so this is what that looks like to in the model's world, right? Uh, and then so this is like essentially like the very first time that the model sees this universe, we'll call it, this is what this universe looks like to the model, like exactly like this. And then so it goes through and then it starts training and then it starts essentially making changes to this environment overall, right? And then as it starts off, like 
exploring, trying to understand more what is going on here. It's trying to compress. Like, that's what it wants to do, right, is compress these things as much as it can. And if it starts, like, compressing good, that means it's it's learning, right? It's it's it's, it's improving. Uh, and it's trying to categorize uh, these this space better uh, so that it can essentially navigate the space better. And then so at the end, we get, like, more a more clustered and, and grouped organization that is very different. Like, this latent space is a very different latent space overall than the original latent space, right? which is kind of the, the, the goal within that. And so just illustrating up front, like this is the perspective of the models within this, right? And then so now let's go ahead and, and uh, play that out and then look at what that actually looks like within this. So we'll, we'll, we'll deploy that architecture. So this is kind of just the same thing here where we're just like, uh, we're just going to like have the model go through, but we're just going to like uh, visualize it differently, right? We're going to actually like showcase like what what's going on from the model's perspective, like what's going on with the model, but like for a human readable perspective, basically, is kind of the end goal within this. So then we have like the door environment and then it got it has its training and its data set, et cetera, right? And then so we can go through and then I trained it for 60 episodes within this. And then so you can see here, agent's thought process, considering action, and then it's essentially like, you know, push door, okay, I can't, the door's locked, so unlock the door. And then it's like, it does this a lot, like it's it still like struggles, you can see here at like uh, episode 38, where like it should do push door, unlock door, push door, but then it's like, like uh, it, it kind of just, it's messing itself up still with this kind of logic, right? But you got, that's kind of just what you have to go through. Um, and then uh, we can go like at the end at the it's hard to scroll up to the very beginning of this but at the beginning of it it's just like straight like you know like push door push door like a lot more random than this overall and a lot less uh, diverse uh, and then let's see if it, it, we go down to like uh, epoch 60 and we should see some sort of improvement right and i know there will be because the loss goes down so as long as that loss is going down um it's learning overall within this environmental structure right so it's it's a lot there to, to scroll through and then so when we get here Still doing the same thing over <laughs> that push, unlock, lock, push, right? Uh, it looks like it's still like still very stuck on that. And then, but the the law, it's learning better what to do within that. But so let's look at the the data here overall. So we have our visualized learning of the causal knowledge. And then so like, again, we it's two graphs that are within this. And then so we, we're going to look at like the two scores within the two different graphs and then different um knowledge basis of that the model has learned based off of this uh, on these two graphs right so this first one the model isn't sure it doesn't know so if like it uh, doesn't know what to do in this instance in the second instance uh push likely causes open so it, as long as the door appears unlocked it knows that in the second one it's still not sure uh and then in this state push likely causes open the door unlocked so essentially it, it hasn't figured out what to do yet when the door is locked and then so that's probably why it keeps uh going back to that locked state because it's still trying to figure out and interpret but what we can see is like these are uh non coin flip scores <laughs> right uh so in this one it, it's extremely confident like this is the the one where it's most confident and then this these are the ones where it's least confident right which is uh, the, where it's like the, the door is locked. It just doesn't know. It's still very much struggling with what to do when the door is locked, but it's learned, right? Because we can see here, like there's some zero states here and into like the initial states uh, where we've got at least something that it's it's learning from from uh, in, in, in these states, right? So it's there's some improvement there. Uh, and then if I trained it, maybe, I don't know, for like a thousand episodes or something, it would have went through. And it's trained for like a minute or something overall. I think it was, it was uh, eight seconds. <laughs> so so uh, I could like uh, just pretty easily like I'll do. So if that took eight seconds for 60, it's, you know, it's going to take uh, a bit more <laughs> than eight seconds to go through a thousand. But we can see here, it, it'll generate. And you can see it's, it's, going through and doing its thing here. Uh, and then so as it's going through and doing its thing, we can see like, it, so my expectation would be that at a certain point, like that loss rate is just going to hit zero. And then once that loss rate hits zero, um, it's going to plateau. Although what we've learned, I should point this out as this is going through uh, within this is that like uh, researchers across the board and everyone across the board has been cutting training too early on these models. Like rocking is, is actually like super good, right? Like it's uh, like an 
like pretty much every single instance, these models would grok it out. So then if this essentially grokking would be if this model like uh, hits a loss rate of zero, say I run it for a thousand episodes, right? So if it hits a loss rate of zero, at like episode like 200, like generally speaking, you would try to, you would be like, okay, let me cut it off at like episode 150 or something, right? But grokking would be, so it hits loss rate of zero at 200 and then you let it go. And then it's going to stay at two, stay at zero for like, let's say like another 200 epochs, right? Uh, but then let's say like epoch 400, all of a sudden it's just going to start like learning again. And then it, that's, that's grokking. Um, and then in that instance, like that, that, that secondary, like when it kicks into that, like that's actually like super powerful uh, within like that kind of learning process overall within that, uh, like how the model's actually operating and, and learning <laughs> within that particular instance uh, overall. And then uh, maybe a thousand epochs was or a thousand episodes was a bit much for this. Although here we go. Okay, cool. So we got it. Um, and it got super sure with the, the doors. So in this state, push likely has no effect on open when the door is locked. So it, it unders it finally figured out what to do with the locked door state. Cool. Uh, but it's still uncertain in certain instances here, but it's like that 0.07 is a lot more than like the zeros and the 0.02s and the 04s that we were looking at there before. Uh, and we have a 0.04 here. Uh, and then 0.94, right? So that's significant improvement there overall. So that training for those extra episodes did help the model here overall. Um, and then so uh, overall, I'll leave a link to both this research paper uh, as well as the code here. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.